has been in the winning column. Indiana, they've won 10 consecutive games. Iowa, they've won eight consecutive games. And Caitlin Clark, you talked about it. Christy, she relishes the big moment. Look at these numbers against ranked opponents this season. Phenomenal. Caitlin Clark is cut from a different cloth. You know that when she's able to dominate in that fashion, being, again, at the top of everyone's scout, it doesn't matter. First top five matchup in Big Ten women's basketball in 30 years. And here we go from Simon Scott Assembly Hall. Indiana controls the tip in the all-white home uniforms. The defense for Iowa is player to player, as Lisa Bluter likes to call it. Man-to-man -man defense out of the gates. And right out of the gate, Mackenzie Holmes knocks down a jumper. Mackenzie Holmes doesn't need to have her back to the basket to get a bucket, and that is a matchup, my friends, that you need to circle and watch on every single possession. Mackenzie Holmes and Monica Sinano for Iowa. Tapped out of bounds. Great defense by the freshman. Yard in zone for Indiana. And Terry Morin, listen, as we talked about, replacing a couple of starters. One of those being Allie Patberg, one of the toughest players in program history. And yet, Christy, she feels like this team has a different level of toughness. Yeah, she said they're different in terms of their experience, right? And that's, you can't quantify what that means for your team. There's only interception. Up ahead to Paris, rejected at the rim. And then a foul underneath. And it'll be Indiana basketball. Lisa Bluter got her team together at the end of the shoot around, had them sit in a circle at midcourt, as she always does. But her message today was different. We are road dogs, she said. <laughs> we have one on the road in front of big environments. Tonight is no different. I love it. And Caitlin Clark kind of tagged that when she was speaking with us as well, talking about the road dog mentality. They brought that up last season and have carried it over this year as well. Earlier this year, they played at Ohio State mm. when Ohio State was ranked second in the country. So Monica Sinano said that gives us confidence to know that we can do something like that. Sinano stripped by Parrish. All the way to the basket. And an early 5-0 lead for the Hoosiers. What a punch of energy Sydney Parrish has been for this Hoosiers team. And Sinano ends the run promptly, a 2,000-point scorer, and part of the law firm that you talked about. Yeah, the law firm of Clark and Sinano. We had that T-shirt made up last year, and they sent me one. My little, <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, wow, that's awesome. Caitlin Clark, her first shot of three. How, how about the string music for Caitlin Clark from the outside? I mean, she revels in this environment. She wants these lights shining brightly on her. She wants the challenge of the moment. Well, she's been even better in league play, which is hard to fathom, but she shot 47% from downtown over the last two games. And here she is again, back-to-back -back threes. I mean, look out. And she's wearing her cape early tonight here on the road, and the crowd is beginning to boo her. But that's out of respect. More McNeil through traffic left and short. Second chance won't go. And more McNeil in that Purdue game really lit a fire under this team. Offensively knocking in threes, but just couldn't get those couple of bunnies to go. But how about Caitlin Clark flying around here? With a cape on, you try to stay connected, and she just holds the gooseneck for emphasis, a little fade back, gets her 10 toes behind the line, and nails that with the greatest of ease. And now a backdoor cut. Clark, a rare miss around the rim. And here comes Grace Berger, the unquestioned leader for Indiana, and she rolls it down. And Grace Berger missed eight games earlier this season. With the knee injury, you see it wrapped up there. Gabby Marshall back the other way. Well, Gabby Marshall's only shooting 22% from three this season. And usually she's a higher percentage from there. Just hasn't been in a great rhythm, but that one looked pure. And then a good defensive effort that time by Gabby Marshall. 
And gets it back for Indiana. Finally, we can take a breath here. I know, I was like, who we? Uh, listen, it's Indiana like is the best scoring defense in the Big Ten, but don't let that fool you. We have two top ten scoring offenses in the country on hand tonight. Yeah, Terry Morton said, we like to run too. Don't, don't leave <laughs> us out of that. We like to push it and go. And they rebound the ball incredibly well. But it's Caitlin Clark's eight rebounds for me. She'll keep it and push it. Good rebound there by Chloe Moore McNeil. Up ahead is Sarah Scalia. First time in the ball game tonight. Good job by Clark there to close the lane. Not allowing Scalia to get in there. Twice she did it. More McNeil. That was a good clean look. Home run pass to Warnock and she pays it off. Well, that's one of the main reasons why Iowa scores 88 points per game because they push with the pass. They don't mess around with it. They sprint and rim run and finish in the paint. I know this is basketball, but Caitlin Clark, the quarterback for the Hawkeyes, right up top to Warnock for the finish. And she's like, yeah, there we go. That's what we want. We do more. We step up, stand out, break rules, and spark revolutions. We save lives, we give life, and we get right back to work. We deliver, no, we over deliver, and we make it look easy. We ball, boss up, shatter records, and ceilings, and expectations, and at the end of all that, we still end up with less. Trailblazer sets their goals and goes for it. They focus on what they're trying to accomplish or what problem they're trying to solve, and they figure it out. If somebody's doing it one way, I get complete joy just turning that upside down and just changing the game. And the best part is that's what's worked for me. One of the best things I learned at IU was just how to learn. Add to that a curiosity that just kept on growing. There were no limits, and, and that was the beautiful part about IU then and now. Over the last 14 years, a lot of kids on campus got into business because they watched us. That's the reason I do Shark Tank. We send the, the message that the American dream is alive and well, that you can be from Bloomington, Indiana, you can be from Idaho, wherever, and have a chance to be super successful. Just reinforcing that in this country these days, to me, is very important. My name is Mark Cuban, I'm an entrepreneur, and I am an IU graduate. Let's go Hoosiers. Friday, a big night on the map begins with a top 10 clash between Nebraska and Ohio State. Then, number two Iowa collides with 12th ranked Michigan. Big 10 Wrestling, presented by Cliff Keen Athletic. Friday, only on Big 10 Network. Basketball on the Big Ten Network is brought to you by State Farm. When you want the real deal like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. What a time to be part of Big Ten women's basketball. Eight top 25 single game crowds this season. We fully expect a record-breaking crowd tonight in Bloomington. They have opened the top deck. And, Christy, we were here for a record-breaking crowd just a couple of weeks ago against Ohio State. This might be a bigger crowd here tonight. I think so. I mean, they're coming to see some great Big Ten basketball where six teams are in the top 25 and four in the top 10. Indiana with its highest ranking in program history, checking in at number two in the polls this week. On the wrong end of a 13-2 run. Scalia, first three of the game for Indiana. Great patience. What a smart play by Chloe Moore McNeil to survey and not give up on the dribble drive and kick out to the weak side. Terry Morin said that Chloe Moore McNeil was the MVP of this program when Grace Berger was out for eight games with a knee injury. And she absolutely was. Here comes Caitlin Clark off the turnover. Already two threes in this game, and right back the other way. Holmes gets it back for Indiana. Good job by McKenzie Holmes to play the high side and get the deflection. Berger wiggles around the defense, well defended by Kate Martin. 
And a jump ball, possession arrow to Iowa. Sarah Scalia, she's come alive offensively for Indiana. There's Chloe Moore McNeil not giving up, staying with it, kicking it out to the weak side. Great angle on that pass. Sarah Scalia nails that three. She had been off the mark to start the season, but got herself back in rhythm. She is the sixth woman of the game presented by Disney Parks. Really starting to find her rhythm. The yeah. first year transfer from Minnesota where she was a legendary player. It's taken her a little bit of time, Christy, but now she's scored in double figures in three out of the last five. Sometimes it's the timing of when you get your shots, not necessarily where you're shooting it from, and I think that's been the adjustment for her. Sydney Parrish. We have to see her take a shot tonight, but she's averaging 18 a game over the last three for IU. First year Oregon transfer on the floor. Grace under fire. Grace Berger right here putting you in the spin cycle, bringing it back the other way, gets tagged on the arm on the way up. What a strong finish with this. Execution just top notch for Grace Berger in terms of her phenomenal footwork to spin back around, give herself enough space and the perfect angle to kiss that one off the window. Berger had 20 points or more in all three games against Iowa last season. Look at that post play inside. Monica Sinano and Mackenzie Holmes. Kick out to Davis. Scalia popped away. Davis called for the foul. And that is the third on Iowa. I told you this isn't rainbows and unicorns today. It was not a five out situation. They're getting down in the mud, in the paint. Monica Sinano and Mackenzie Holmes are going for it. And you'd love to see it as the old school battle it out on the block situation down there tonight. And there is Sonata scooping it away from Holmes. Two of the best bigs in the conference, two of the best bigs in the country. Warnock on a great feed. And what a phenomenal find by Caitlin Clark there. She just baits you to sleep and sends in a sizzler of a pass. There's Paris from downtown. Sydney Pairs told us, hey, I find my spots, and for as much as Mackenzie Holmes thinks I make her life easier, she makes mine easier as well. Clark, second chance, rejected by Holmes. And the leading shot blocker in the Big Ten not making it easy in the post for Iowa. Now we talked about so many storylines in this game tonight. Yes. This is not just two top five teams, but two teams separated by a half game in the Big Ten regular season. Iowa, of course, won a share of it last year, but Indiana has not won since the inaugural season in 1983. My goodness, I mean, these two teams were matched up in the tournament championship. Mackenzie Holmes was not healthy in that game, as Terry Moore reminded us of today. But now both teams are healthy. Both teams have a lot of depth and experience with that depth. So you love to see this kind of a challenge at this juncture of the season as Terry Morin is trying to get some clarification on positioning down there. Our officials Roy Gobain, Julie Cromenhawk, Felicia Grinter, and Caitlin Clark will get a three point opportunity at the foul line. And uh, Glenn Box, an assistant coach for Indiana, is off the bench saying she kicked her leg out. Well, let's see. There's a snatch back right there. Let's see if her leg comes out to create the contact. And I don't think it did, did it? I mean, Chloe Moore McNeil was on the other side of it. I mean, she's got to be able to jump up and come down. It didn't look like she intentionally stuck her leg out to me. How but good is she at getting to the foul line? Second most free throw attempts in the country behind only Angel Reese. 25% of her points per game coming from the strike. I mean, she has the basketball in her hand. Yep. A lot of times on the offensive side, right? I mean, just under nine assists per contest, so she's making plays. But she is supplying so much 
offensive firepower for this Iowa team with what she's able to do as a scorer and an initiator of offense for her teammates. Top two in the country in scoring and assists this year. For the second straight year. And rebounds the miss from Scalia. Just watch how Clark surveys. She got underneath that ball. Fifth turnover of the first quarter for Iowa. Clark called for the carry. She got up underneath the ball there. But she likes to push that tempo, and Indiana knows it. And Terry Morin said, hey, we just have to have our awareness in check. When that ball is coming downhill at us in transition like that, little Iverson action here by Indiana. And Terry Morin said, we have big guards. We want to utilize the mismatches that are going to be present. And you see Gabby Marshall matched up with the Arden Garzon right there. And you see the difference in the, the height there, right there at the elbow. Number 24 is Gabby mm. Marshall for Iowa. She's 5'9", Garzon 6'3". Yeah, she wants to sit her down in there. Here's Holmes, defended by Sinano. Holmes flips it up and in. I try to tell you, it's going to be basketball 101 <laughs> on the interior tonight. Circle that matchup if you haven't already, because it is on and popping on the inside. Two of the most efficient scores in the country. They're both top five in field goal percentage. Stolke, the freshman, on the floor for the first time, traveled. Give Iowa six turnovers in the first period. Well, let's take you down here and see the screen. It's going to happen by Grace Berger, who sets this play up and gives McKenzie Holmes time enough to free herself some wiggle room. A little shimmy shake, great footwork, and the snatch and finish inside. There's Zong stepped on the line, defended by Marshall. And it's back to Iowa. You talked about it. Terry Moore mentioned the fact that Mackenzie Holmes was not healthy in those meetings against Iowa last year. Two of the three. Mackenzie was just coming off that knee injury that sidelined her for eight games. She only averaged 10 points in those three games against Iowa last year. Yeah, you hate to see that. And I know Terry Moore at the end of last year said the same thing. Like, we just didn't see our team as a whole. Look at the battle inside. Look at that. Ten on the timer. Sonano falling over. And the ball goes out of bounds and back to IU. Well, Mackenzie Holmes did a tremendous job there pulling the chair. For the biggest Big Ten experience, there's no plus like home. The Big Ten Plus app, powered by Big Ten Network. Download and subscribe today. Berger to Holmes. And now Caitlin Clark on the break. Three. Good rebound. Stokey puts it back. Caitlin Clark just puts you in a spinner. I mean, she's going 100 miles an hour and then stops on a dime and pulls. Even though she missed it, she gave her teammates a chance to get to the glass. Speaking of the spinner, how about Grace Berger off the window? Well, she loves to utilize her strong body for positioning like that. And get some leverage with that body contact. Clark, no. Tapped around and secured by Garrison. Less than a second differential between game and shot clock to close the quarter. Indiana sustained a 13-2 Iowa run here. And we're tied at 19. That's what Terry Morton said. Not too high, not too low. Come in, be in the moment, and react as necessary as competitors. Berger with the ball. Inside to Holmes. And she walked with 3.7 left on the timer. Certainly enough for Caitlin Clark to get a good shot. From the logo, that's where she shoots from. You've got to guard her all the way to half court, or she's going to make you pay. The Holmes will come out. She doesn't pick up a foul here at the end. Sonano, the handoff, two seconds, and they won't get the shot off in time. Well defended by Indiana. 
Two top five teams tied at 19, and the Stars out tonight in Bloomington. We were talking about the post players being matched up, but what about Grace Berger and Caitlin Clark? Clark firing up some triples for the Hawkeyes, and Berger spinning her way to a nice deuce for the home team. I've always loved building things. Not just structures and skyscrapers, but teams who make it all possible. After all, at 19, interior play, something you wanted to look at in this game tonight. Your thoughts so far? I've been rubbing my hands together all day long for this matchup. The pulling of the chair defensively, staying loose. Mackenzie Holmes getting loose on the other side, offensively looking for some contact down there. But Mackenzie Holmes, she is fleet of foot. She can dance around. That's what it is. On, on defense in the post, you have to stay on your toes. It's a two-step down there. Two-step to the high side. Step through, two-step on the baseline side. And you're seeing it on both ends for these two teams with two strong presence inside in the painted area. Iowa went on a 13-2 run in the first quarter after trailing 5-0. Indiana countered back. And a foul will go against City Parish, sending Caitlin Clark to the floor. That is the first on Parish. We got tangled up. You see Caitlin Clark shaking off her left leg. You see Clark trying to come around. Oh, it's definitely a moving screen. You have to stay in your cylinder to set that screen, and the point of contact was not set. Three second violation on Sonano. Now, one thing you and I pointed out off air going to break, Sonano only had one field goal attempt in that first quarter. What do you want to see from Iowa to get her more involved in the post? Well, they have to match her angles, right? And give Mackenzie Holmes credit for forcing her to counter move in terms of getting her seals. She has had to work extremely hard to get vision of the passes that can get to her. So they have to be patient with her and match her angles inside. Warnock's trying to look for you. See Clark, her eyes went straight down in there to Monica Sonano. They like that two-man game. There's own steps in, and she's called for a blocking foul. Had Garzon had her hands up straight, I think she would have been safe, but I don't think she was ready for that catch to come in when it did and was whistled for the contact. The freshman who played on the Israeli national team, so a lot of experience for her. Great hustle play. Mackenzie Holmes tapping it off the leg of Monica Sinano to get it back for IU. Well, I love the passion on the defensive end right here. Mackenzie Holmes sitting on some Hoosier fans, feeling the love and feeling the fire of the moment as well. Already nine turnovers for Iowa, only averaging 14 a game. Marshall off the bounce, and that's two quick ones on Sydney Parrish. And now already three in the quarter for Indiana. Well, with how well Sydney Parrish has been scoring the ball, it's going to be hard for Terry Morin to see her walking off the court at this point of the game. As you said, 18 points on average, the last three for Parrish. She has found her role on this team in her first season transferring over from Oregon, but she heads to the bench with two fouls. It'll remain Iowa ball, 14 on the timer. The Hawkeyes started three of five from downtown in this game. They've since gone 0 for five. The pace of play has changed as well. And another turnover, the 10th on the Hawkeyes. And that is going to make a big difference as the game goes along, if that pace of turnovers continues for Iowa. Well, Indiana forces 16 and a half turnovers a game in league play. At this rate, they're going to have a heck of a lot more than that. And they've scored five points off of those 10 turnovers so far. Berger, late whistle comes in. She'll get two shots. Looks like that one was on Kate Martin. That's her first. And the team's first of the quarter as Berger goes to the line. Still no points in this quarter yet for either team. Berger trying to change that. Oh 
Roethlisberger, a preseason, all Big Ten, and she was first team all Big Ten last year. Just tough as nails, has some USA basketball experience, and she said she really gained some leadership qualities and tutelage with that USA basketball experience a couple summers ago. Sonato, yes. Her first points of the second quarter and just her second bucket of the game. Scallion right back the other way and draws a foul in transition. Well, some more of the interior play. This time it's Monica Sonano down in the paint. A little screen by Kate Martin. It was like a blur screen. It wasn't really set, but she was in the way enough to disrupt Mackenzie Holmes' recovery to get to her. And no double team came because she shot that one nice and quickly. <laughs> get it out she of your jokes. I try not to take a dribble. My That's goal right. when I get the ball, get it out of my hands yeah. as quickly as possible. It's like hot potato That's when right. Sinano gets the ball in the post. Well, she learned from Megan Gustafson, who was an Iowa and National Player of the Year. Just a, maybe five seasons ago now, four seasons ago now. But very fundamentally sound in the paint. And now they've got Hannah Stolke waiting in the wings. Absolutely. A freshman reigning. Gatorade Player of the Year in Iowa, coming off the bench. And three straight trips down the floor now. Indiana getting to the foul line. Yeah, they've gone right into the painted area. The paint play is not just for post. Right, you see the guards getting great positioning inside. Passes coming on time and on target to Chloe Moore McNeil in there. Second foul on Warnock, she heads to the bench. Monday, the Hoosiers hit the road for a rematch in Columbus with Ohio State and Taylor Mike Sell, the 13th ranked Buckeyes, trying to get revenge on Indiana. Catch that one, 7 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Both of these teams beat Ohio State when OSU was ranked number two. Highest road win in program history for Iowa. And they get another top two road win this season here in Bloomington. They told us that the confidence from that win earlier this season carries over. So moments like this. Grace Berger in the point guard position for Indiana this season. And I really like the decisions that she's been able to make from that spot this year. Holmes with five. Trying to get loose. Great help defense. That time from Caitlin Clark. Two seconds on the timer. It'll be Indiana ball underneath. Well, good job there by Caitlin Clark to wall up from the weak side. I don't think Mackenzie Holmes was expecting a presence there from a defender. Trying to get it off quickly here for Indiana. Moore McNeil draws a foul smartly on Caitlin Clark. Her first and the team's fourth. That was a hard fall by both players. And she had to pump fake that. We hear a nice long pass. The head and shoulder fake put it on the deck. And Clark and Chloe Moore McNeil with a lot of contact. And they're going to take a look yeah, at it. Yeah, they are going to take a look at it here. We will take a break as well. It's a three point game in Bloomington. Seven minutes to play in the first half. Did you know TurboTax now provides you with a tax expert who will do your taxes from start to finish? Try TurboTax Live full service. A tax expert will do your taxes and find every dollar guaranteed. Try TurboTax Live full service. Wouldn't it be great if all Valentine's Day gifts were filled with peanut butter? Well, maybe not all of them. Maybe it's just Reese's that are better. Chucky Hepburn leads the Badgers to Lincoln. Throws it down. For a matchup with Sam Greasel and the Huskers. Greasel, how about that? Big Ten Basketball, Saturday at 4 Eastern on Big Ten Network. Whenever heartburn strikes, get fast relief with Tums. It's time to love food back. Tums, Tums, Tums. Hi, I'm Shannon Storms-Bedore. 
When we started selling my health products online, our shipping process was painfully slow. Then we found ShipStation. Now we're shipping out orders five times faster. And thanks to ShipStation's discounted rates, we're saving a ton. Honestly, we couldn't do it without ShipStation. Join over 100,000 online sellers who get shipped done with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com slash TV and get two months free. Give me a moment. Okay, here is what I found. Welcome to Iowa, the best university for writing and communication. From Pulitzer Prize winners to Oscar and Emmy winning screenwriters, directors, producers, and editors. Sorry to rush you. There's a lot to cover. Where we launched threes from the logo, have the best tradition in college sports, and a world-class teaching hospital. This is Iowa. Tomorrow, don't miss a huge wrestling doubleheader on Big Ten Network. First, Nebraska battles Ohio State in a top ten clash. Then, the second-ranked Hawkeyes lock up with Michigan. Big Ten Wrestling presented by Cliff Kane Athletic tomorrow, only on the Big Ten Network. Now, let's go inside the huddle with Terry Morin. Here's the thing that we got to be able to do now, all right? And I go, I knew you're trying really hard. We got to be able to score and once, right? Put those in, right? Don't just settle to get you the free throw line. Put them in, right? Ball on the deck from Holmes. Five on the timer. Berger leaves it short. By the way, going into that last break, the officials went to the monitor. It was to check to make sure that the foul happened before the shot clock expired. It did. That's why Indiana maintained possession. Exactly. You heard Terry Morin say, hey, we have to oh, so foul and Grace Berger inside. Wow. That's her first. She said we have to take the contact and make the shots. And that time Grace Berger was called for hooking and holding. When you put your hands behind you inside, you can't lock the player in. You have to stay loose. Well, this will be an interesting thing to keep track of tonight. Iowa scores. 18% of its points at the free throw line, but Indiana allows the third fewest free throw attempts per game in the Big Ten. And the best scoring defense in the league defend without fouling Iowa tonight. Stoking right into the chest of Garzone, and the freshman is on the board for the Hawkeyes. That's just a tough move, creating contact inside for the strong finish. Still looking down to isolate inside, and that's where Iowa has come up big so far tonight in their paint points. Looking for Stolke, tapped out of bounds. It'll stay with Iowa. Look at Stolke right here, nice wide and low post position initially. Do your work early, and then you can finish up easy. That's the key to good post play. Foul by Garzone, that is her second. And both teams in the bonus now the rest of the way in this quarter shooting free throws. Just have to give some space there. And you see Terry Morin is saying, hey, we have to be disciplined. That's what she told us at practice today, right? She said we have to stay disciplined on both sides, but especially on defense against a team like Iowa, who is going to continue to come in waves at you from all five positions. Now, interestingly, Christy, Two of Indiana's better three-point shooters are on the bench with two fouls. Sidney Paris shooting almost 40%, and Garzone leads the Big Ten in three-point shooting over 40. How about that? And I wonder if that will change the scope of things defensively for Mackenzie Holmes, because now Iowa can maybe sit down inside and double her and crowd her space. Not looking to do that, staying individually covered with Sonano on her. Holmes gets it to go, and the foul. And the foul goes against Sinano, her second. Well, Terry Morin just implored her ball club to finish the plays and get the and ones. And Mackenzie Holmes says, all right, coach, let's see what I can do when I get the next <laughs> touchdown in there. And she got it. Cannot complete the three-point play. Oh, 
So now two players for Indiana with two fouls, two Iowa players with two fouls. Sonata will stay on the floor for Lisa Bluter. Well, that's the trust. That's the trust of the fifth-year player, Monica Sonano, who returned to the glee of Caitlin Clark. Stolke, a tough shot over the outstretched arms of Mackenzie Holmes. They're really excited about her prospects. I'm excited. Too. I'm excited too. She is steady. Scabia knocks down a three. of contact no call and it's back-to-back -back buckets for the reigning Miss Iowa basketball Hannah Stolke. Stolke is so tough that defense is coming right at her and it didn't phase her one bit but after January you're not a freshman anymore I mean you played enough games to be called almost a sophomore now. Foul underneath it does go against the freshman as we look back at this Sarah Scalia three. Well, Grace Berger, great awareness to kick it out to her. That extra pass, a lot of people don't make that pass. That skip to the other side that's wide open most times. You have to test it. It's the best shot for the team. It's not always the best shot for you. And I think when you see Grace Berger play that selfless style, it just trickles over. But on the other side, conversely, when you see that happen and that pass isn't made, when you catch it, you're going to be selfish, too. <laughs> I mean, that's just how I mean, everyone out here is a competitor, right? Yeah. But if you see that that ball is being passed around and popped around, you have high assist numbers, that's what you want. And this Iowa team averages over 20 assists per game. So they know about sharing the ball. Here is Clark. No points in the quarter. And changes that with a step back rattling down. She knew she hadn't scored yet. And she needs to stay in her rhythm. You see a little zone here this time from Iowa, a little 2-3. Clark dishes it off, and a Fulter puts it home. And just simply done, right? Caitlin Clark knows she's going to draw a lot of attention. So what does she do? Just pitch a little pass right there into the pocket right under the rim. I think it's safe to say Caitlin Clark's on triple double watch yeah. again tonight. Ten points, four rebounds, six assists. And she already has nine triple doubles. And Clark coming off her ninth career triple double and a massive win over Penn State. Most ever in Big Ten history. Reigning National Player of the Week and the front runner for National Player of the Year. The only one that she's close to is Sabrina Unescu, who had 26 triple doubles over her career at Oregon. And the foul goes against Hannah Sandvik, getting some valuable minutes tonight because of the foul trouble for IU. Well, look at the defense. All the eyes are on Caitlin Clark. And what does she do? Just seamlessly just pitches a pass underneath for an easy deuce. There you go. Most triple doubles all time in the Big Ten for Caitlin Clark. And uh, she was top two last year in scoring and assists. She's top two again this year in scoring and assists. And if it stays that way, she'll be the only player ever to be top two in both categories in multiple seasons. Well, you love that. And those triple double numbers, that's men's or women's. Okay, so. Let's understand the assignment <laughs> and what we're really talking about here. I mean, it's just a phenomenal effort. And again, drawing the best defensive schemes from opponents. And she just shrugs everything off, like, and what? Like, next. Well, with double digits in scoring in this first half, she's now scored in double figures in 76 straight games. As more McNeil buries a three. And that is the fourth of the game for IU. Well, that mark of 76 consecutive and double figures, that's best in the country. Madison O'Grady into the game for Iowa, and she threads it down to Kate Martin. 
somehow Iowa just finds a way to dig a shot out of the mud and make the extra pass. I mean, they've done it with the extra passes in this first half. Got another good feed that time. 11 assists now on 14 made baskets for Iowa. Credit that one to Caitlin Clark. Well, as we are under 90 to play in the first half in Bloomington. That's what Iowa does. I mean, they switch to this zone. You see Caitlin Clark shooting the gap right there. They're bumping off. Sitting in a 3-2 this time. Slips out of the hands of Moore McNeil and back to the Hawkeyes. Just look at the laser beam of a pass by Caitlin Clark. Perfectly placed in motion pass. Right in stride. Are you kidding? I would love to play with Caitlin Clark. Boy, she makes it so easy for you. All you have to do is glide your way to the rim. Looks like a quarterback yeah. dropping it into a wide receiver. That is beautiful. Oh, and that's Lisa Bluter. You know, I've, I've adopted that word in my vernacular because of her. How about that pass from Berger? Scalia can't finish. Moore McNeil gets it back for Indiana. Less than a minute to play in the first half. Parrish back on the floor with two fouls. Up ahead to Clark. Wiggles past Berger. And the reverse off the window is good. Goodness gracious. What did we just see? What did we just see? Matt? Come on. That's called the blender. No, hey. Oh, man. That's called the bender, the blender. <laughs> wow. Wow. Three-point Iowa lead. Holmes defended by O'Grady. Sonato on the bench with two for Iowa. Kevin and a foul. Holmes, a chance at the end one. Mackenzie Holmes applying what she heard in the timeout huddle from Terry Morin, which is create the contact, take the hit, keep on ticking, and finish. And get to the free throw line. We need to score. Mackenzie Holmes has taken that to heart. This is her second and one opportunity in the last couple of minutes. And Holmes has not come off the floor. She's played every single second of this first half. She leads all Indiana scores with 11 points. Leave there's a little there. bit of a chip on her shoulder after yeah. things went down last year against this Iowa team. Indiana got swept in three games with the Hawkeyes. Yeah, I mean, she wasn't healthy. I mean, can you imagine just sitting there and not being 100% healthy? and your team needs you and you can't do anything about it. I mean, that sat with her until tonight. And she's letting it fly. And I'd love to see it. Time at 39. Shot clock turned off. Clark with the basketball. Five seconds. Marshall. <laughs> Rebound, Berger. And we end the first half tied at 39. In the first half, just like we started this game, tied up. But wow, we've seen some phenomenal play from both teams in that first half. The paint play has been phenomenal. 24 to 16 advantage for Iowa in that regard. But it's been the board work. The board work has been the difference maker for Iowa as well. 22 to 14 on the glass. Expecting a Indiana continued to stay steady with what they were doing well, and that was getting stops and turning Iowa over. They were also scoring with contact on the interior for some and ones to stay right at pace. But wow, Caitlin Clark was absolutely phenomenal. The touchdown pass there, and then this one the connection of dots. She has seven assists in that first half alone. To go along with 12 points, this one was just as crafty as I've ever seen from Caitlin Clark, who is on triple double watch for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And this second half, if that first half was something to marvel at, this second half is going to be even more so because you're going to see both teams dial it up. Mackenzie Holmes inside was fantastic for Indiana with her 12 points. She got a couple of those on and one situations. And that paint play. Look at that. Sonano down there. Mackenzie Holmes just denying her. 
and he touches down low. Kate Martin scooped up the loose ball, but couldn't finish. Well, these teams met three times last year. Iowa swept Indiana 3-0, but the games were decided by an average of six points. And when you look at the last 16 meetings between these two programs, 10 of them decided by seven points or less. This has traditionally been a very tightly contested matchup. How about that shot? Goodness. Stepping hey, away man. from the right hand and knocking it down. Hey, now, listen, my headset is crooked right now. <laughs> and I know she's not the only player on the court, but my goodness, she's the only one I've seen do that. Garzon flips it up, almost went down. Iowa on an eight-game winning streak. They have a couple of wins over top ten teams, as does Indiana as Berger lays it in. She really wanted an and one there from Felicia Grinter, but won't get it. She got lucky. It was almost, I don't know if she saw that she said that. Well, let's go back to this move by Caitlin Clark, who just surveys and rises up on a dime and yanks that one through the net, just behind the back. I mean, it just looks like she stays in the gym to do that move like a thousand times over. It's just effortless. Ball stays on a string Man. when she's dribbling. Easy. Indiana, the third longest active winning streak in the country right now. Ten in a row. Most in the Big Ten. Garrison had it rejected by Clark. And then the freshman ties it up. And the possession arrow stays with the Hoosiers. Well, on that play, Grace Berger had the ball at the lane line extended up top. And then it looked like Mackenzie Holmes had herself squared to the sideline. And she tried to get it into her. And then she was, I thought, off balance on that shot. Sonano with two fouls, sat a little bit towards the end of that first half. And scoop shot won't go. She wanted a foul called on Sonano. That looked like Sonano had broken the principle of verticality on that particular shot. It's a high ball screen. The law firm trying to work together in the two-man game. Brown wanted to travel, won't get it. Less than 10 to shoot. Clark, step back. Tapped down by Holmes, and that is the third yeah. foul on Monica Sinano. It's a good job there by McKenzie Holmes to maintain contact on Monica Sinano inside, who was whistled for over the back. Uh, Indiana with a 15-game home winning streak. That's the fifth longest home winning streak in the country. They are unbeaten against the top 25. They have three wins against the top 10. As you get another look at that foul. You see Mackenzie Holmes maintaining her contact inside, which made that call an easy one. Berger, all kinds of footwork, and draws a foul on Kate Martin. And that is the second on the redshirt senior from Edwardsville, Illinois. Grace Berger just sits so low when she gets the ball. Kate Martin, one of the best defenders on the perimeter for Iowa, but that size that Terry Morin was talking about, it's not always in height. I mean, the size and strength of a player like Grace Berger is an advantage. Gives Indiana a one-point edge. They have a half-game lead on Iowa in the Big Ten standings. A win tonight, though, in Iowa has two top two road wins for the first time in program history. I mean, it's just been an amazing run in that regard, especially throughout the conference. But to have so many ranked teams, six of them in the Big Ten. Martin left open. Three-point shooting has just not been there for Iowa. They started the game three for five. They've since gone 0 for 8 from downtown. Berger spins it in off the window. And Berger is up to 13 after a combined 5 of 20 shooting in the last two games. Yeah. 
Let's see what Indiana is going to do here. This would get them some really strong momentum if they can get a bucket and they turn it over. Gabby Marshall, Clark from way downtown and rims out. And a foul on the defensive rebound by McKenna Warnock. It'll be Iowa basketball. The Grace Berger on the other side for Indiana. I mean, she has perfected the spin move and the footwork that goes along with the mechanics necessary to finish. Right here, she's going to bring you in and then step through and smooch it off the glass. <laughs> you love to see the basics and the fundamentals be rewarded with a bucket. Wow, a foul on the floor. Fans thought it was going to be a traveling call. Instead, Roy Gobain called a foul against Indiana. And it goes against Berger, her second. Take a look, Berger right there. Nice attack of the closeout by Gabby Marshall and got that contact. Martin, wow, what a tough finish. Through contact, defended by Sarah Scalia. Scalia was right there and she had to kind of clamp herself down to hold Scalia back. Berger. And Martin up ahead to Clark. Weaving through the defense and draws a foul. Two shots coming for the reigning Big Ten Player of the Year. Well, Caitlin Clark is like a cannonball shot out of a cannon when she gets downhill in transition like that. And it's tough to contain her because she is just so low to the ground and taking a straight line drive to the basket. Foul's becoming a problem for Indiana. That's three on Parrish, Garzone on the bench with three, and Berger in the game with two. And for now, Parrish and Berger will remain in the ball game. Well, they have to be disciplined, and that was a challenge that Terry Moran gave them today at shooting practice. She said, we have to be disciplined, take care of the ball. Our shot selection has to be good. I thought that last shot right there by Grace Berger was a good shot. Just didn't fall. Interestingly, on the other side, Lisa Bluter has elected to sit Monica Sonano with three fouls. And she knows that it has been very physical down inside, and Mackenzie Holmes has been getting a lot of touches down in there. Marshall, kick out. Warnock a three. And the first one goes down for Iowa since they open the game three of five from distance. Lisa Bluter has called Warnock the do-it-all player for her team. She's the glue for the Hawkeyes. Lily Meister into the ball game for Mackenzie Holmes. Parrish responds with a three. And that's what they need her to do. That's why she needs to stay on the floor and stay disciplined defensively. Right back the other way, Caitlin Clark on skates, putting it off the window. She just surveys and slithers her way right to the rim so easily. And Caitlin Clark tagged with her second foul. And she's got to be careful here. And some words for Roy Gobain. Second foul on Caitlin Clark. And look at Chloe Moore McNeil. Got poked right in the eye. And Caitlin Clark was like, oh, wow, what? Look at that. <laughs> my relationship with my credit cards wasn't good. I got into debt in college, and no matter how much I paid, it followed me everywhere. Between the high interest, the fees, felt trapped. Debt, debt, debt. So I broke up with my credit card debt and consolidated it into a low-rate personal loan from SoFi. I finally feel like a grown-up. Break up with bad credit card debt? Get a personal loan with no fees, low fixed rates, and borrow up to 100K. Go to SoFi.com to view your rate. SoFi, get your money right. I'm Sean Blakely, Technical Director at AmericanEagle.com. Our clients have complex website and digital needs. Wernico Global Brands needed a new website platform to empower marketing and reduce technical complexity for 12 international brands, including Werner Ladder. We solve digital challenges like this all the time. We re-architected and integrated their back office systems, significantly reducing operational expenses. For complete website and digital solutions, come to AmericanEagle.com. Teamwork, it inspires us on and off the field. 
And here in Big Ten country, where we battle for titles and trophies, when it comes to fighting cancer, we're on the same team. Our playbook, uncover new ideas and discoveries to enable new cancer treatments. Our Big Ten rivals are teaming up to fight cancer together. The Big Ten Cancer Research Consortium, providing more wins, more memories, more hope. Mondays. I promise you we're going to find her. Alert is TV's most thrilling new drama. The kidnapper might still be in the area. I got a description, but no ID. We almost had a time. We got to dig deeper. And now you can watch anytime. We got a hit. He doesn't get away. Come on, let's go, 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 go. The girls, where are they? Come on! You're safe, man. Yeah. You're okay. Alert, all new Mondays on Fox and watch anytime on Hulu. Back in Bloomington, Hawkeyes on top by one. Let's go inside the Iowa huddle with associate head coach Jan Jensen. Love it. Get nasty. We're going to win this game by winning these next five minutes. Christy, she told us today she feels blessed to be coaching in this era of Big Ten women's basketball. Hey, I feel blessed sitting here watching it. Berger blesses Indiana with a deep two. And the Hoosiers are back on top. How about Grace Berger? She is just bringing her A game to the floor Caitlin tonight. Clark, are you kidding me? See? Falling to the floor and one opportunity. Every time you turn around, Caitlin Clark seems to have an answer for the momentum that Indiana brings. Grace Berger just hit a tough, fantastic shot. And then here on the other end, she gets downhill once again, creating contact and will head to the line to complete the and one. We're tied up again, Matt. I mean, this game has had so many ties. Nine ties, 11 lead changes. Fourth foul on Indiana. Clark up to 19 points. She had 12 in the first half, but was limited to four in that second quarter. A concerted effort by the leading candidate for the National Player of the Year award to get going here in the second half as Holmes comes off the bench and lays it in with the left hand. And now Holmes up to 14. And there's Mackenzie Holmes coming alive for the Hoosiers. I can't even finish my sentence. And then Caitlin Clark comes down and sizzles home a triple. Come on. I mean, this game is so fantastically fast paced. I love it. Holmes. Back to back buckets for Mackenzie Holmes. Also a National Player of the Year candidate. Clark wanted that one. Yeah, I thought she was going to pull it. Stolke fouled, and it will go against Mackenzie Holmes. That is her first and the fifth on Indiana, so Iowa shooting foul shots the rest of the way in this quarter. Well, that's good news for Terry Morin and the Hoosiers that Mackenzie Holmes has just picked up only her first foul. Well, especially when you consider the foul trouble that she's dealing with. Sydney Parrish has been on the bench an awful lot tonight. She has three fouls. Yarden Garrison just checked back in with three. Berger and Moore McNeil each have two. Sunday, Zach Eady leads top-ranked Purdue against Chase Audige and upset-minded Northwestern Big Ten basketball presented by Jeep Sunday at 2 Eastern on the Big Ten Network. Uh, Iowa really struggling tonight from the free throw line just 5 of 12 for 42 percent and in a game this close the margin of error is very small Matt and they don't want to look back at that stat at the end of the game. This is a team that's typically very yes. good from the foul line they're shooting or they're scoring rather 18 percent of their points in league play from the strike. Yep. Martin. The mark and it's scooped up by Berger. Really good defensive show by Chloe Moore McNeil to force the pass by Berger. Rolls it in. Around and down for the senior from Louisville, Kentucky. Erica Wheeler 
for the WNBA is here. Lynn Dunn is also here. Christy Styles, the new coach for the Indiana Fever, she's also in the building. And they had to stop play there because the clock did not start. Rather, it did not keep going. And I'm not sure if it's not before that basket or after. But uh, the officials are going to have to review the clock here and get this sorted out. We're going to take a look at it. Our crew, Felicia Grinter, Julie Cromenhog, Roy Gobain. Two-point Indiana lead. Iowa in the bonus the rest of the quarter. One conference loss apiece for these two teams who have combined to win 18 consecutive games and have six combined win wins against the AP top 10. My oh boy, Grace Berger has been in her back tonight. Seven of 12, 17 points. She's down in the dust part of the bag, getting the chiclets and all the <laughs> lifesavers with the dust on them off of it. Listen, Grace Berger has gone to work with her hard hat on. And I tell you what, she may not show a lot of passion on the outside, but she is a fireball on the inside. And Erica Wheeler firing her up there on the baseline. She understands what it takes to be excellent. And just look at Grace Berger in the first half, seven points. And in the third quarter so far, since there's still two and a half minutes to go, Matt, she's, she has 10 points. She's killing it. Well, Caitlin Clark a little bit slow going in the second quarter, only had four points. Not so in the third. The Stars tonight doing what we expected them to do in the first top five showdown in the Big Ten in 30 years. Well, both of them are on triple-double watch. Okay, Grace Berger has three triple-doubles in her career here at IU. But look at what she's been able to do. Get downhill, change her pace between the legs, catch a body, spin away from the defense, and connect on her free throws. But she just does a fantastic job of creating contact and maneuvering herself to the rim. When she was a freshman, assistant coach Glenn Box told her, you have the potential to be one of the best players in the Big Ten someday. And at the time, she wasn't even close. But she said that conversation with him sparked something in her. And now she's exactly that, Christy. Well, she has just been a fantastic leader. I mean, she's a double-double machine. And now this season, in the absence of Allie Patberg's presence on the court, has stepped into the point guard role, which I love for her. She makes great decisions for herself and for her teammates and putting her team in viable op opportunities to score. Well, she has this Indiana team ranked number two, their highest in program history, and as such, a new attendance record for Indiana women's basketball, 13,000. 46 beating the previous record from the 2018 WNIT. Oh, what a phenomenal environment here at Assembly Hall. So we just got confirmation. The clock, they decided, didn't go for 29 seconds. So it went from 2.30 down to 2.01. And 19 seconds on the shot clock. It'll be Iowa basketball side out of bounds. And the Hawkeyes have Davis, a Folter, Clark, Sinano back on the floor with two fouls. And Hannah Stolke, their star-studded freshman, on the floor as well. Well, she has just been so confident with her choices on the court. Look at her attacking and got tagged. A late whistle goes against Garrison, and that is the fourth on the freshman from Israel. She cannot believe it. There's... Garazone right there. She tried to stay vertical, but she came down just a bit at the last moment. Freshman on freshman right there, challenging one another. Stonky four of four from the floor with eight points. And the struggle continues from the line for the Hawkeyes. Yep, now just five of 13 as a team. Five of 14, and the rebound to Berger. Stokey's 0 for 6 from the free throw line. I mean, this is a big moment. I mean, you said over 13,000 is a record crowd here. Holmes with the turnaround. Give Holmes 18 tonight. Mackenzie Holmes has been 
spectacular tonight with her skill set on the interior. Clark fouled by Moore McNeil. And Clark a little bit shaken up here. Right next to our broadcast table, wincing right as she went yeah. down. And remember, she and Moore McNeil collided when Moore McNeil took a three mm -hmm. in that first half. Here's another look at it. Oh, it's like she lost balance, and oh, that was, that was a tough fall. Chloe Moore McNeil just lost balance and fell right into the legs of Caitlin Clark on that one. And that's the third on Moore McNeil. So now Garzon with three, Moore McNeil with three, Parrish with three, and Berger playing with two. And that ends a 6-0 Indiana run. There was a two and a half minute scoring drought for Iowa before that made free throw. And there was a drought from the line <laughs> for Iowa as well. And Caitlin Clark, I mean, she comes into this game an 84% shooter from mm. the line. She has struggled as well, even though she's made her last two. Pays off big time. That three-point shooting foul, all three made by Clark. It's back to a two-point game. And just a shade over a minute to play in the third quarter. And just look how Indiana moves without the ball. Mackenzie Holmes now has 20 points or more in seven of her last eight games. We were talking about the depth see it right there. Clark a contested three, well defended by Moore McNeil. Burger puts it down. Felicia Grinter and the officials will have to go back to the table to take a look at this. Oh, it didn't wow. look like it had stopped for long before Felicia Grinter noticed it. Yeah. We could barely hear the whistle because oh, this place is rolling here. It's so loud in here. Indiana the on their stopped. biggest run of the game. Five point lead for the Hoosiers. We've had 14 lead changes Man. and 10 ties. Amazing. But we knew that coming in. If you're Iowa here, well, first let's take a look at what Mackenzie Holmes has been able to do. Another 20 point night for Mackenzie Holmes. Well, Indiana, we were talking about the depth of both of these teams returning players. Look at this back screen that's going to be set by Grace Berger. A little lift screen, and that opens up the lane for Mackenzie Holmes, who had the Jordan-esque tongue wagging right there. Then Grace Berger, for emphasis, holds the gooseneck at the nail, her sweet spot. Does this break give a little bit of an advantage here to Iowa because now they have a free timeout to set up what they want to run? Absolutely. And they're you, excuse me, they're utilizing the timeout for just that to organize themselves to make sure they can get a great look. What are you running here if you're the Hawkeyes as we just see them put the clock down to 16 and a half. And six seconds on the timer. We just heard from Roy Gobey and he believes the sound in the arena is what is stopping the clock. Ah. A record crowd, 13,046 on hand here at Assembly Hall. Oh man. All right, so six seconds on the timer, 16.6 left in the third. A two man game. Clark, Sinano, can't beat the buzzer, shot clock turned off, five seconds, Berger, spins, left it short, ball out of bounds, and it'll stay with IU, one second on the timer, and no call despite the contact. And Terry Moore, it had to be settled down there on the baseline, I mean, Grace Berger had such a snatch of a spin move. Just found herself caught under the rim. Sonato and Clark check out for Iowa. Berger the inbounder here for Indiana. 
Holmes had it knocked away. Excellent defensive play by Gabby Marshall. Woo, buckle up, folks. Hey. It's a five-point lead for number two, Indiana. <laughs> this top five showdown, it's coming down to the final quarter in Bloomington. I love it. You said close your eyes, don't look down. Fall into me. Five meeting in Big Ten women's basketball since 1993. By the way, that year Iowa went on to the program's only Final Four appearance as the special night of the Big Ten. And Christy, it really speaks to the depth of this league. Autumn Johnson has eight Big Ten teams in her bracket right now. As Autumn should. I mean, this league, top to bottom, is just so fantastically competitive. And every team brings their own strength, which makes it even that much more beautiful to watch. So there was a foul on Mackenzie Holmes, our State Farm State of Success, brought to you by State Farm. A combined six wins for these two programs against the AP Top Ten. Warnock traveled. And that is the 14th turnover on Iowa. They are averaging 14 a game this year. Well, that's what you're talking about, the Indiana's defense. Yep. And the prowess on that side of the floor where they're holding opponents to a Big Ten record. Well, not a record, but the Big Ten leading 59 points allowed per contest for their opponents. And they're doing it right now to a team like Iowa, who averages 88 to lead the country. <laughs> Iowa has scored 80 points or more in 13 straight games. And you just have to think, well, Monica Sinano has been quiet tonight. Just four points on two of four. For them to win this game, you almost feel like they have to get her going a little bit yeah. in the fourth as she draws a foul. And it goes against Holmes. And that is her third. Well, two hands on. Someone who is dribbling the ball and facing the defender. That's an automatic whistle. Warnock driving, Parrish the foul. That is four on Cindy Parrish. And already three fouls in the opening minute of the fourth quarter on Indiana. But the way Iowa has been shooting their free throws today, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, not to be shady, but I mean, that's just what the complexion of this game has presented tonight. Eight of 17, Iowa is from the stripe. Warnock. And the Hawkeyes, though, have knocked down their last four. One issue, though, aside from the free throw shooting, Indiana might run out of players here. Garzone on the bench with four, Parrish with four, Moore McNeil with three, Holmes with three, and now Garzone is back into the ball game with those four fouls. Remember, coming up next, our huge night of women's hoops continues. Diamond Miller leads number eight, Maryland, against Northwestern in Chicago. That is coming up next on the Big Ten Network. Shining bright like a diamond. Yes. Diamond Miller having a fantastic season for the Terps. Tapped out of bounds by Warnock. And Iowa went back to their zone on that possession defensively. Just trying to shore up the painted area. It's 30 to 30 in paint points for these teams who have been battling it out, not just the post players, the guards getting downhill and getting into the paint as well. Turnover gives it back to Iowa. It's interesting. Iowa led Indiana points in the paint 24 to 16. But what we have seen in the second half is the emergence of Mackenzie Holmes finding her rhythm in the post. And there's Sonato, a second chance. Warnock pays it off from downtown. The offensive boards for Iowa. And that has saved them many times here tonight. It's like a 1-3-1. A one, one. Holmes, second chance, you bet. 22 for Mackenzie Holmes. Talk about second chance opportunities. Mackenzie Holmes has just been phenomenal tonight on the offensive boards. Her ninth 20-point game in Big Ten play. It's a 9-3 advantage on second chance points. Holmes for picks it off and saves it to Garzone. Lisa Bluter looking for a travel. 
Gares on a three. Yes! Court rejected by Gares on. Two shots coming for the fifth-year senior. How about the Holmes hustle to keep the play alive for the Hoosiers? A deflection defensively. Monica Sedano couldn't get a hold of that pass. And then right down the other side is the great Yardini. <laughs> Yardin Garzon for a triple. Her first points of the night, Garzon yeah. went to the bench with four fouls and no points. Comes back in and drills a three. Yeah, but again, that came from a skip pass. So, boys and girls, if you're watching, that skip pass is there. Throw it and let players get their legs underneath of them and rise and fire and stick those triples. Ooh, Grace Berger on triple-double watch. 19.7 rebounds, six assists. Steps away from the line and a long pause here after the foul. Two shots coming for Berger. And she tied her left shoe up a little tighter. I'm not sure if that meant something was going on with that foot or the shoe came off on that play. But she is as tough as nails. You see that wrap on her right knee. She missed those eight games earlier this season after being injured over the Thanksgiving break. 7-0 Indiana run, and a timeout taken by Lisa Bluter. Angie's list is losing the list. From now on, it's just Angie. So what happens to all the people that needed the list? Oh yeah, everything still works. We just made it better. Oh. We even let you book services instantly now. Start your home project at Angie.com. Saturday, the Gophers and Badgers step onto the map in Madison for a top 20 border battle. Big Ten Wrestling, presented by Cliff Keen Athletic. Saturday at 2 Eastern on Big Ten Network. Jameer Young and the Turks host Jalen Pickett and the Nittany Lions. Oh Big Ten Basketball, Saturday at noon Eastern on Big Ten Network. Start with a bang. Invite a bunch of friends, then fill the infield like a rock concert. Mix in some star power and turn them loose. A 500-mile all-out fight for NASCAR's biggest prize. That's the Great American Race. The Daytona 500, February 19th, only on Fox. So sweet, so crispy. Nobody makes breakfast as good as Wendy's new homestyle French toast sticks. Nobody. <clears throat> nope. Mm -mm. Keep talking. I'm, I, should, I, I can't I'm, hear you. I'm, I should probably stop. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's homestyle French toast sticks. This is the Big Ten Network. This is a great league. There's no game that's safe. Every night is like playing in the NCAA tournament. There are tremendous, tremendous players in our league. Setting the bar for women's basketball competing in the Big Ten Conference. If you are a women's basketball fan, you get to follow the best league in the country. Look at all the great players in the footprint of the Big Ten. For me, it's the best league in the country right now. Last year, Grace Berger scored 20 or more in all three games against Iowa. She has 21 tonight, but Mackenzie Holmes, Christy, has been massive in the post tonight for Indiana. Well, it's Holmes cooking right here, down inside, getting that cross screen and going to work. Going away from the double team and kissing it off the window. And this one, the double team has no chance because she's just going to shoot the turnaround jumper. And my favorite is get your own touch. If you don't get the ball, you're posting up. You have people on your back and your neck. You're trying to hold your spot. Don't rely on other people. Go do it yourself. It's a life lesson. Go to the glass and get your own touch and go to work. Sonano. 
7-0 run for Indiana, their largest lead of the game at seven. And the ball tipped by Gabby Marshall out of the Iowa timeout. And the Hawkeyes get a stop here. Iowa still zoning, sticking with that, trying to contain the paint. Tipped away by Clark into the front court. And Clark stops the 7 0 Indiana run. Gar Garzone with those four fouls didn't want to do anything to possibly pick up her fifth foul. It was a smart move by her to stay disciplined on that play. Clark has 15 in the second half. Berger, simply executing by Grace Berger against the zone. Get to those elbows. Excellent execution there, picking apart the zone of Iowa. Offensive foul on Sonano, and that is her fourth. Well, the frustration setting in on Monica Sonano. She was trying to get down and, and post up and right there. Oh. See Sarah Scalia just getting right in her path, and she's going to have to take a seat here, right here. She just squared her body, can't run through players, but she had her momentum already built up. It's tough to put the brakes on. Iowa likes to mix up things defensively. We've seen player to player, man to man. That's what Lisa Bluter calls it, player to player. For McNeil finds Garzon. And Indiana going right to the post with Sonano on the bench with four fouls. As they should. That's where Terry Morton said they had the advantage with their big guards. Was up this record crowd of over 13,000. Clark hesitates and drops it in. And one opportunity for Caitlin Clark. The change of pace and the herky jerky shiftiness of Caitlin Clark is so tough to stop. She's, she's surveying, gets by the primary defender, and then attacks the second line. Mackenzie Holmes is arguing that she didn't touch. Clark, there was a little bit of a body graze there, but now Holmes is on the bench with four fouls. Uh, that's a tough one for sure. But when you leave your feet, you're at the mercy of the officials. It's just best to stay vertical and planted. So Sonano on the bench with four for Iowa. Holmes on the bench with four for Indiana. And it's two freshmen in the post now. Stolke and Meister. Let them go to work. Let them fight for a touch. Garzo. Yes! the ninth rebound of the night for Berger, one shy of a double-double. Kate Martin 0 for 4 tonight from 3, just has not been able to strike from the outside. Berger operating. Meister fouled on the putback. Yarden Garzone. The freshman, a member of the Israeli national team, gets the swing, swing three, the three ball corner pocket, all string music for Yardini. At Buffalo Wild Wings, the deals don't stop. Buy one, get one half off Wing Tuesdays. Buy one, get one free bonus Thursdays. And wing bundles from $9.99. Only at Buffalo Wild Wings.
Which NFL players depend on sleep number? That guy? That one? Holy moly, all these guys. This QB for sure does. Let me just look at him. Uh-huh, this offense, pretty good. They do. This one here. We got a big pile of them here. Yeehaw! Cowboys do. Guys that do the gritty do. Boom! It's a circle palooza. Boom, circle him. Heck of a bed. Turns out 80% of NFL players have a sleep number 360 smart bed to improve their energy and recovery. It's game-changing sleep only from sleep number. My name is Ashley Cortez, and I'm the founder of the Stay Beautiful Foundation. When I started in 2016, I would go to the post office and literally fill out each person's name on a label. And now at ShipStation, we are shipping 500 beauty boxes a month. It takes less than five minutes for me to get all of my labels and get beauty in the hands of women who are battling cancer so much quicker. ShipStation, the number one choice of online sellers. Go to ShipStation.com slash TV and get two months free. Justin Ward alongside Autumn Johnson in our Chicago studios. And Autumn, Indiana pulling away just a little bit. How are they doing that? That one-two punch of McKenzie Holmes and Grace Berger. McKenzie was steady throughout the entire game, going on a scoring rate page. And then Grace Berger, silent assassin, came alive in the second half. They have 45 of Indiana's 76 We are keeping right that silent assassin name on. We're also going to preview number eight, Maryland at Northwestern. But for now, we got a top five matchup to finish. Let's get you back out to the game. Thank you, Justine. We're looking forward to that one. Maryland right now in third in the Big Ten, but these two teams tonight in Bloomington separated by just half a game. Indiana with a win, sole possession of first place, a game and a half on Iowa in pursuit of their first regular season championship since the inaugural season in 1983. But with four minutes left, foul trouble, a real story in this game. Well, now you see the discipline that's necessary to win and it's about closing out games and Monica Sonano told us today she said that Lisa Bluter told her it's about the team who makes the least amount of mistakes mm. down the stretch that'll win this game. Well, Sonano back in the game with four fouls. Lisa Bluter rolling the dice with her team down 10. It's the largest deficit for either team in this game. And Holmes also on the floor with four fouls. Iowa has some work to do because Indiana has built up this fantastic 10-point lead. Sonano puts it down. Sonano had four points in that first half. Those are her first points of the second. Well, that's their bread and butter game. The two-man game with Clark and Sonano on the lob play. But they just haven't been able to get that on a consistent basis tonight and credit Indiana's defense for that. They held Sonano to just six shot attempts. Berger. Floating in the foul. 25 for Grace Berger, a new season high. Grace Berger with the big body bends move down here. She knew she had the advantage with her strength and size and went to her post game. So now both teams with their next fouls will send the other into the bonus. And Berger at the line for IU. They've been really good at the line tonight. Broadcaster Jinx. I was gonna say it, but <laughs> no, but Grace Berger, what a phenomenal game. Almost a double-double with those nine rebounds, but she has really put IU on her back in the second half. Caitlin Clark responds, putting the team on her back. And that is the fifth foul on Yarden Garzon. Oh, and that's big because Yarden Garzon had just knocked in a couple of triples. And Garzon just needed to let her go as she put her right arm down at the last moment. Caitlin Clark, the junior, knew that she could get downhill on the freshman. All eight of Garzon's points can come in the fourth quarter, and now she'll have to watch the rest of the game from the bench. Well, Caitlin Clark told us today after practice, she said that she thought that their guards had an advantage mm. on the dribble drive, right, and getting to the rim, and she went right to that in this clutch moment of the game. Holmes. Defended by Sonano with four fouls. Contact now. Who's the whistle on? It 
will go against Sinano, and she has fouled out. That's a major, a major impactful play. Well, Sinano, only six points in this game, but she's their second leading scorer with 18 a game. Yeah, she just had trouble right there, staying square. And looked like Clark got more of her body than Sinano did for the foul, but Sinano will take a seat. Holmes now two of five from the stride, Indiana 14 of 20. Seven point lead for the Hoosiers. Well, that's when you pop your hand up if you're Caitlin Clark, right. like that's me. Let's save your sister on that play. Both teams in the bonus the rest of the way. Clark won't go. And Lauren McNeil rips it away. Chloe Moore McNeil has just done a solid job on Caitlin Clark. I mean, I know she has 33, but they have not come easy for Clark tonight. So many contested oh, shots. Yeah. Clark, 11 of 25. She does, however, have her seventh 30-point game of the Man. season. But to your point, it's it's been tough sledding. She's yeah. had to work hard for those shots. And Chloe Moore McNeil is one for eight offensively and one of four from three, but she has eight rebounds, three assists. So she is doing other things. You don't just have to score the ball to impact the team. Door has been left open, though, for the Hawkeyes and Caitlin Clark. 2.15 to play. Stolke into the chest of Holmes. And how about the effort tonight for Hannah Stolke? Ten points for the freshman off the bench, and Lisa Bluter calls a timeout. Well, the youngster Stolke has just been fantastic in terms of her body control. And she's got to step up now for the absence of the fouled out Monica Sonano. You see Mackenzie Holmes right there in the way, but it didn't disrupt her focus, which was to finish. So both teams in the bonus the rest of the way. A six point game, 2.04 to play. A pair of timeouts for Iowa, three for Indiana. Saturday, catch a pair of men's hoops matchups. Noon Eastern, Maryland hosts Penn State. Then at four, Wisconsin squares off with Nebraska. It's all Saturday, only on the Big Ten Network. 2.04 to play here in Bloomington. Indiana, two minutes away from their seventh top 25 win. How do you play this out if you're both teams over the next two minutes? Well, if you're Indiana, you don't need quick shots. Okay, take that shot clock down to under 10 before you get into any of your primary offensive actions. But if you're Iowa, you have to be disruptive. Maybe run some blitzes. Try to get some steals. Get two on the ball, two, one pass away, and get some deflections. And push tempo and try to get some fast break opportunities. Some pressure from Iowa, and it leads to a foul. And it goes against Gabby Marshall. And it did not look like Lisa Bluter wanted that because of her reaction when that whistle was blown. That was not an instructed foul situation there. It sends Chloe Moore McNeil to the foul line. Moore McNeil, an 83% foul shooter. When you talk about Moore McNeil, she's having a career year. And we asked Terry Moore, you know, what's been the catalyst for this? Maturity. Yeah. Grew up in a small town in Tennessee. Came here as a freshman, first time really playing in front of crowds like this. And it's taken her some time to find her footing. Boy, has she ever. Well, the leadership has come organically for Chloe Moore McNeil as her mom passed away several years ago, but she has been the mom figure for her younger sisters. And so, for this team. And for this team, but I think it all goes hand in hand. The ball knocked out of bounds. Possession arrow points to Iowa. They will take a look at this here. As Stolke and Holmes were kind of clawing for it off the miss. Oh, it looks like Stokey right there, but who hit it? Oh, did, did Parrish that hit? catch it with her forearm? It looked like Parrish may have skimmed it. Let's see if it changed trajectory. Can't really see it on that one. Let's see if we can see it here. It 
To me, it looks like that went off Holmes, though. Right, so, yeah. Let's Maybe see Holmes this one. Fingers touched it last. But look at Sydney Parrish. Did it touch her on the way out? I mean, it grazed the eyelashes of Sydney Parrish. Let's see if it. Let's see if it hit her. Sydney Parrish is right there on the right. I don't think it hit her. Well, the call on the I floor is Iowa her. basketball. So is there enough here to change that and give it to Indiana? Now for that angle, it kind of looks like Stokey was Stokey the last was to the touch last. it. It looked like it. It didn't look like it skimmed. Eight point game. Call on the floor is it's Iowa basketball. Hawkeyes with two timeouts left. Terry Moran's team with three timeouts. Garazone on the bench, fouling out with five. Sinano on the bench for Iowa. She fouled out with five. And I think the length of this review just gives you an idea of how meaningful this possession is. If it goes back to Indiana, I was in trouble here down eight with 150 to play yep. and Indiana shooting free throws the rest of the way. Time and score situations, you go over it every single practice. Both of these coaches, long tenure, they understand the assignment of this moment and how to stay composed throughout. There's Stolke right there, looks like she was the last one to hit it, but man, Sydney Parrish's left arm. No, it's not even close. Not like, even close. Not From even that close angle. to that. That's the perfect angle for a definitive answer, and I think that's what the officials saw. It's Indiana basketball. They have reversed the call on the floor. And now Iowa desperately needs a stop here. How do you defend this if you're the Hawkeyes? I think you have to swarm. I think you have to throw some traps. I think you have to fly around and try to get some steals created in live ball situations. Into Berger. Somebody's got to come up and close it. There it is, the double team. They're trying to get the double team. Somebody needs to rotate to that next pass, though. Nobody is there to rotate. Wow, and a foul comes in from Caitlin Clark. Were you expecting them to foul with this much time left on the in the game? I think so. I yeah. think they wanted the steal. And when they didn't get the steal, maybe that was the instruction, hey, we're going to blitz it. We're going to trap it if we don't get a steal and foul because they're trying to preserve the clock. That's the fourth on Caitlin Clark. Do you need threes yet if you're Iowa? I mean, they don't hurt. <laughs> but, but And if Caitlin Clark's taking them, they definitely don't hurt. That's what I'm saying. But you don't have Monica Sonano in there. Yep. I would say she's got to pull them. She's got to pull. There she is. Rebound, Stokey. Tap back out. Martin. Warnock off the window. Here's the full court press. They're fouling right away. They just don't want that clock to run. Yeah, trying to extend, extend the, the game. game. Yeah, have to. Make Indiana make free throws. They're 69 percent from the line tonight. If Indiana can hang on, they will have a game and a half lead on Iowa for first place in the Big Ten. But boy, they've got some big ones coming up down Ooh. the stretch. Look at that. But that's what the Big Ten is all about. And that's what makes this game so important. Absolutely, absolutely. At home too. I mean, they're going to play again on the 26th. You see that right there at Iowa, and that game is already sold yeah. out. You told me that. Yeah. <laughs> that was like, Hawkeye Arena's getting geared up for yeah. that one. Oh, yeah. Eight-point game. One sixteen to play. Clark too hot with the pass to Stokey, and it's back to Indiana. Well, we were talking about this game being a battle of wills. And this Indiana team on the top of the charts, not just in the Big Ten, but nationally on the defensive end. And that has been the difference in this game. Terry Morin said with this team, there's just an extra level of toughness compared to previous seasons. Iowa seemingly content to defend this set, but a foul will send Holmes to the charity strike. Holmes with 23 points. As you get a look here at the upcoming schedule for Iowa, they will tag this five-game stretch at Maryland, a team they just beat. Yes. 
And then at home against Indiana in what could be a battle for the Big Ten Championship. Well, I mean, this game tonight felt like that. No doubt. I mean, the This crowd, feels like March tonight. It really does. And I know we're sitting in the thick of February, but I don't care. This, this game has all the implications of what March is going to be. And a timeout taken by Lisa Bluter, so just one left now for Iowa. And again, no Monica Sinano. She fouled out with six points. That snapped a streak of 15 consecutive games in double figures. Great job by Indiana tonight defending in the post. Yeah, no question about it. And remember, coming up next on the Big Ten Network, Maryland at Northwestern. Maryland in the thick of things. Still an opportunity for the Terps to get into the mix for the Big Ten regular season crown. One of four top ten teams in the Big Ten. And that's, I mean, the beauty of this conference is that you're going to be battle tested when it comes to March and postseason play. And how good has this Indiana team been with seven newcomers? They are undefeated against the top 25, and they haven't lost in this building since last year. Oh, that's phenomenal. But that just speaks volumes to what Terry Morin and her staff have built here in Bloomington. Less than a minute to play. Clark down to Stolke, draws a foul. Now who will get this go against? It goes against Parrish, and she has fouled out. So Garzone has fouled out for Indiana. Now Parrish fouls out with nine points. And she's really been in foul trouble all night. Just couldn't get into a rhythm yeah. because she was on the bench, off the bench, really since the start. And it's so tough to play like that because even when she came in the game, she was in foul trouble. So that kind of thwarts your, your effort level. You don't really want to go full throttle, right? Because you don't want to create fouls for yourself because you want to be on the floor. So it's kind of like a catch-22. Stolke at the line to shoot two. She's 0 for 6 tonight. Well, that's what I said. You don't want to go and look at the stat sheet after the game and circle that free throw stat. But it's just been an issue this evening for Iowa. Rebound more McNeil and a timeout taken by Terry Morin. What a week for Assembly Hall. Not five days ago, Saturday afternoon, Indiana and number one Purdue and the Hoosiers come away with the win. The court storm, 17,000 plus on hand. A massive win for the Indiana men's basketball program. And now tonight, an opportunity for Indiana to pick up a program record fourth win against the top 10 team this season. Well, walking the hallways here at this building, at Assembly Hall, I mean, I get chills. I mean, the, the history and all the banners that hang in here, the WNIT Championship 2018, Terry Morin, and her group got that one. But it's just like, it's like a museum. And the honor and respect that you give this program when you walk in is immense. Well, this is a women's program that has had just historic season after historic season. You saw the WNIT banner at the end. But this team has designs of not just a Big Ten regular season oh, yeah. championship, but a Final Four appearance in the midst of their best season in program history. Yeah, I mean, they've gone to the Sweet 16. They've gone to the Elite Eight. They want to crack the code yep. and, and get back to the Final Four in, in March and try it. Give it a try, right? I mean, when you are taking incremental steps like that, you know that your hard work is paying off, and you just need to keep chopping. Timeout, Lisa Bluter, the final timeout for Iowa. Down 11 with 48.5 seconds to play. We talked about how deep this league is. Autumn Johnson's projections coming into the night. Eight Big Ten teams will make the big dance. I mean, just look at these teams. I mean, night in and night out, this is who you're going to see. And good luck if you don't come in <laughs> focused and ready to go. Like, you have to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. I always say that in this conference because if you get caught sleeping, you're going to be put to sleep in the, in the loss column. You have to come and, and be disciplined and be focused, 
for the task at hand. I think the amount of top five seeds we saw in that graphic yep. also, Christy, speaks to the success of this league outside of conference play. There you go. Be a lot of teams potentially hosting opening weekend games in the NCAA tournament come March. That's right. I mean, teams like Maryland beating UConn earlier this season, and you know, you saw Indiana beating Notre Dame earlier this season. So there, Notre, uh, North Carolina, like there have been some- Tennessee. Really, right, yep. Tennessee put them on the list. I mean, it's been across the board in this conference where the Big Ten has made a statement prior to March Madness. It's been an all season madness for the Big Ten and the teams who have presented and represented this conference full on in the top 25. Don't count Iowa out just yet. Caitlin Clark, I recall, had 24 points in a fourth quarter comeback against Michigan last year. And she gets some magic here. 45 to play. Clark, no. Rebound picked up by Sanvi. And Indiana will head back to the foul line to put this game on ice. A record crowd, 13,064 on hand in Bloomington. They picked the right night to show out at Assembly Hall. Yeah, it was packed two hours ahead of this game. Fans trickling in. I saw uh, probably a little two-year-old girl with the candy stripe pants on. With the, oh, she was so cute. Start of young. And congratulations to you, Thank my friend, you. on the newborn son. My two-year-old, hopefully for my wife's sake, is asleep right now. 87-76. Clark. Desperation time for Iowa. And a timeout taken by Terry Morin. So one left for Indiana, zero for Iowa. Do you just foul right away at Iowa? Do you take a little bit of time to try and steal the basketball? What's your strategy? I think you try to steal first. Like, that's your first thing. And depending on the jump ball, maybe tie it up. Who has the possession? The possession arrow points to Iowa. I mean, you can try for that so you don't have to grow that lead if Indiana makes their free throws. You have possession on the jump ball. Go in and try to dig it out with two hands. Well, remember, Iowa swept Indiana last year. Three consecutive losses to this Hawkeye team. And I won't say that Terry Moran tipped us that there's a bit of revenge there, but you know, with as competitive as this program is, they wanted this one Absolutely. tonight. We're just gonna burn this clock here. Stay with Indiana, 18.4 on the timer. What a win for IU. Another top 10 win. It's their fourth of the season. They remain undefeated against top 25 teams at 7-0. And the Hoosiers are now 23-1, worthy of a top seed in the tournament at this point. And listen to this crowd, 13,064 in Bloomington. Just an amazing environment. This is big. That's why we say that all the time. I mean, the opportunity is big, the moment is big, and Indiana gets the W. I just think Terry Morin and her ball club, they willed this game on the defensive end, and that was the big difference maker. They forced 18 turnovers for Iowa. They were able to score 14 points off of those. They pushed How tempo. Berger and Holmes. Yes. 26 for Berger, 24 for Holmes. And Indiana gets it done. They remain undefeated at home this year. 16 straight home wins. Fifth longest active streak in the country. And they extend their overall win streak to 11 as the Hoosiers line up for the alma mater in front of a packed student section.